Right folks, now we've got the HLT in the room and what I'm looking to do is install the um, Herms coil and the element protection. So we've got a cranes bill float switch here. When it's up, that means that the SSRs can work in the control panel, or it will once we've wired it up. And when it's down, it means the power to the SSRs is cut, therefore we cannot fire an element. So we're going to install this just above the element, so that when the water level is above said element, then of course the HLT can start to do its job. But if we forget to turn the HLT off, and we empty it, this is our safety feature. So I'm going to require a hole to be drilled pretty much adjacent to, to this uh, tri-clamp fitting. So I think we're going to go ahead and maybe just pop it in about there. That looks good to me. And then we're going to put the Herms coil in as well. And the Herms coil, I think, will sit. I want access to the handles, you see, from the front, maybe about here. So if we've got the recirculation whirlpool going in there, and it would make sense to have everything else in line with that. So I think we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead with that idea. So we want to draw a line pretty straight all the way down the pot. Straight down here. And then that's very faint pencil line on there by the way. I know I've been out of shot while I did that, what a plonker. And then we're going to put the HLT coil in. Uh, this here is going to be the thermo well. So we're going to go above the thermo well just slightly. So if, yeah that looks like a good height. So that will be the first of the holes and how we're going to do this. So if anything I'll just come up slightly because I can extend this. So there we go. So we need to make one, two, three holes in the pot. So this particular Herms coil has 
um, compression fittings on the end. So we're just about to tighten these up. I'm just taking that off so I don't accidentally grab the wrong bolt and ruin the O-rings. Let's hope that these open wide enough. Yes, they do. Right, so I'm not a big fan of stainless steel compression fittings, but for pipes such as this, which is pr pretty thin wall, uh, welding it is going to be a real pain in the wrong end. So the best option would be to have some type of flaring tool, but I don't have that either. So these compression fittings are what came with it when Tom ordered it. So that's what we gonna use. So I've got the pots in the stand folks and uh, that's how she's gonna look afterwards. It tips and everything, it's fine. Uh, but just in the meantime, until I get some elements, I've not actually ordered any yet, but they should have them in stock in screw fix or tool station. But yeah, either way, until that happens, I have got a couple of blanking plates which will close off the ports and allow us to do a bit of a leak test. So there we have it folks, we're filled up to the 75 or 20 gallon mark, we still have the uh, recirculation port to put in. That's why I've not taken any, any higher. It would if I unhook this tip backwards, I've just found out. So uh, I might introduce some type of safety mechanism here to prevent accidental release. But quite frankly, I will be supervising it at all times. And as you can see, the float valve is in the upright position, meaning that the elements would actually come on. And of course, where dry as a bone, no leaks anywhere to speak of. So I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. The brew stand is almost there. So I might just do a bit of a leak test on the mash tun and the HLT. I think the HLT is complete now. We just have the element to put in, the recirculation port to put in. We've got the Herms coil in position. So I think yeah, we're about there. Oh, I do need to get some probes as well, some uh, thermal wells. So that's all that's required, I think. The control panel hasn't moved today it's still over there on that grain and that's gonna go on this television mount here and it'll swing out and then nice and conveniently it's at the right height see this one's okay on the wall but it's sometimes a little bit inaccessible whereas this it's just gonna be a nice nice height for the control panel and everything is you know, I don't have to stretch for anything that I can see in every pot. I really am quite pleased with how that has actually taken shape over the past few days. So there we go, folks. I'm going to wrap this one up. Join me again for another part of the build. But that's pretty much uh, heating elements, bosses, secured for this vlog. So we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.